In this video clip, we will explore shoulder instability and the circumstances under which it can occur. Because the shoulder joint is hypermobile, this renders it relatively unstable and thus prone to dislocation. This is especially true in the young sporting population. So how does it fit into the clinical picture? Patients can present with either traumatic or atraumatic shoulder instability. These two broad groups have typical associating features which we can remember by using the acronyms TUBS and AMBRI. Let's start with the traumatic group, which is the T in TUBS. These present as unilateral dislocations, and in 90% of patients, the shoulder dislocates antero inferiorly. In this picture, we can see the typical clinical presentation of an anterior dislocation, the squared off shoulder and the fullness of the delta pectoral groove. X-ray imaging can confirm the clinical picture. It's important to remember that for shoulder dislocations, three X-ray views are required, AP, lateral, and modified axillary, as this will ensure that posterior dislocations aren't missed. In 80% of anterior dislocations, there is a Bankart lesion. This is a tear of the glenoid labrum along the inferior surface. Sometimes there's associated bone loss, in which case we call it a bony Bankart lesion. In 40% of the cases, the impact of the glenoid rim on the humeral head causes a depression in the cortex. This is called a hill sax lesion. This is what a hill sax lesion looks like on arthroscopy, and this is what a Bankart lesion looks like. Here we can see a bony Bankart on arthroscopy. Once traumatic shoulder dislocation has been diagnosed, the recommended treatment is surgery. For a Bankart lesion, a Bankart repair is done where the glenoid is repaired using anchor sutures. In contact athletes and cases with significant bone loss, the anchor sutures may fail, as can be seen here in this clip. If there is significant bone loss, a modified latage is performed, where the coracoid process and its attachments are grafted and anchored to the inferior glenoid rim. This deepens the glenoid cavity and creates a tenderness sling to prevent recurrent dislocation. Modified latages are stronger repairs, but may have more complications than Bankart repairs. Now let's move on to atraumatic shoulder instability, which is the A in AMBRI. Atraumatic shoulder instability usually occurs in people with generalized ligamentous laxity. This can be identified with hyperextension of the elbows and knees and exaggerated apposition of the thumbs. In the shoulder, we can look for the sulcus sign, 90 degree external rotation, a positive apprehension test, and perform posterior load and shift maneuvers. In this video, we can see the humeral head dislocating posteriorly. The rotator cuff and the scapular muscles tend to be weak, and along with the lax capsule, results in multidirectional dislocations. Usually, both shoulders are involved. Here, the recommended treatment is physiotherapy, if there is no improvement after six months of physiotherapy, an inferior capsular shift is performed. In this procedure, sutures are used to decrease the volume of the capsule, making it tighter, as can be seen in this video. This is the end result. Once the patient has been appropriately treated, he or she is discharged with a shoulder immobilizer and followed up in 10 days. The patient is assessed for stability and any signs of rotator cuff tears, particularly in older populations. Important findings in first-time dislocations. At least 80% of patients will have an associated Bankart lesion. 40% will have a hill sax lesion. 15% will have humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament, which is when the inferior glenohumeral ligament is torn off from its humeral attachment. 5 to 15% of patients will have a superior labral tear from anterior to posterior. With increasing age, there is an increasing risk of rotator cuff tears. By the age of 60, up to 60% of patients will have a rotator cuff tear. Thank you for watching our video.